Welcome to our next video. Another person vanished without a trace. This is just another heartbreaking episode of a loved one gone missing. Please like and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment with your thoughts what happened. Also in the description I will leave a couple of links to podcasts about this week's case. James Martin Roberts, from Kernersville, North Carolina, was born on August 19, 1996. As a youngster, he was a born athlete, participating in a variety of high school sports. He concentrated on soccer throughout high school, even being elected team captain. Aside from being described as funny, popular, and intelligent, he was also described as a great soccer player. His parents John and Kimberly had been divorced, but Martin continued to be close to both of them. In addition, he was close to his stepmom Abby, and his half-sister Nikki. On Tuesday, April 19, Martin was at the Klondike Cafe, a popular hangout spot on Appalachian State's campus. He was having a great time with his fraternity brother, and they were participating in the trivia night. On Wednesday, April 20, John expected to hear from Martin. They were going to talk about Martin's classes for the next semester as well as a paycheck Martin was going to get from his restaurant job. John did not set aside a call with Martin on Wednesday. He wasn't worried but became more nervous when the call was not answered by the following day. Martin's friends indicated to him on Thursday, April 21, that he would be heading down to the library the next day, where he took a backpack and water bottle. Around lunchtime, Martin ran into his cousin, who was also attending Appalachian State. He walked with her to the bus stop, she got on, and he walked away towards a busy intersection. He had told her that he was going to his fraternity house. Martin was supposed to be home by 4 p.m., but when his friends came to check on him, he wasn't there. He didn't respond to any of their calls or messages. Martin was reported missing on April 21, 2016. His roommate knocked on his door, but there was no answer. When he checked inside, he found a note. The roommate called John and read him the note over the phone. The note was very personal, and Martin's family has only released selective portions to the public. Wow! What was in the note? Surely this is a big missing piece to solve what happened. What didn't the family release? Martin left behind a note as well as his laptop, iPad, cell phone, and wallet. In the note, he reflected on opportunities his family had given him that he didn't take advantage of. He never said where he was going or that he planned to hurt himself. John and Abby, Martin's dad and stepmother, say that this isn't the first time Martin has expressed disappointment in himself. About a week into his sophomore year, Martin was at a party, drinking with his friends. He then got into his vehicle and pulled out in front of a campus police officer. He got a DWI and was arrested. To me, it sounds like things are going downhill for Martin. That night, Martin called his high school girlfriend Kayla and asked her to pick him up from the hospital. She lived about two hours away, so she was kind of upset that he didn't call anyone closer. When she got there, Martin had already been released from the police station. They got into an argument and broke up that night. Definitely not a great night for Martin. Martin took a little longer than a day to tell his parents about his DWI. He told them that he wanted to come home and they picked him up. Martin's parents thought he would only stay for a day or two, but Martin surprised them by saying he was taking the semester off. Martin took the semester off and went back to Boone, North Carolina but he told his family that he was going to attend Appalachian State University again. They later found out that he had enrolled in Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute instead. Martin's friends and roommates said that he had been acting strange lately. He would come home, and they would ask him where he had been. He would always respond by saying that he had been with his cousin. However, his friends later realized that he and his cousin didn't have the type of relationship in which they hung out together. 
A friend of Martin's has come forward with information that he picked Martin up two days before he disappeared for a haircut and to run some errands. This friend also says that Martin had a mini fridge in his room, but when the police searched it, the fridge was practically empty. Martin had left a high school group chat, as well as his fraternity group chat just days before he disappeared. He told his high school girlfriend that no one could help him. She was confused about his statements and said he had never said anything like that to her before. It's possible Martin felt like he was in over his head and didn't know who to talk to. This is getting very strange indeed. Does anyone out there know what was troubling Martin? The police received a tip from a young woman who knew Martin. She said she saw him walking towards Trout Lake on the day he disappeared. Trout Lake was a popular spot for college students, and it had water activities, hiking, and walking trails. Martin's food supplies and hiking gear suggest that he may have gone on a hike. Unfortunately, the helicopter search at night didn't find anything. There were two more sightings of Martin in this area, around the same time as when the woman said she saw him. The police thought it was possible, but the tip didn't lead to anything. His family suggested he could have gone to the beach, as they had been on several vacations near Myrtle Beach. Unfortunately, the man believed to be Martin simply was not. I am going to put these theories out there. Number 1. Martin was very unhappy and down. Martin was tired of pretending his life was something it wasn't. He had told his family that he was attending Appalachian State. The police discovered antidepressants in the apartment. Martin had not been prescribed medication, and the police were unsure where the pills came from. The police spoke with the counseling center at the school, but there was no proof that Martin had ever received mental health counseling. When he was really doing online classes at the community college. His dad said his grades were fine, but Martin hadn't logged into class for about a month before he disappeared. Number 2. Martin took his own life. Martin didn't have his license at the time he disappeared, so the police couldn't track him down that way. They checked records for any bus or cab rides he might have taken, but there were no records. Martin was also seen on foot several times that day, it's possible he just walked away from the bus stop. Some people think Martin may have walked to Trout Lake and died in the water. However, there have been dive teams, sonar equipment, and cadaver dogs that have searched the area and found nothing. Number 3. Did Martin start a new life? Martin left the bus stop, but where did he go? His family said he was athletic, but didn't like to sweat. The police also released a grainy video of Martin walking away from the bus. He wasn't exactly dressed for a long walk to start a new life. Number 4. Was it foul play? It's possible that someone in Martin's life hurt him or that he had someone in his life that his family didn't know about. Maybe Martin hitchhiked somewhere, and that person hurt him. Martin's family has also created a Help Find Martin Roberts Facebook page. Martin has two tattoos. One on his forearm of mountains, representing the mountains of Boone. The second one is lyrics to a Bob Marley song on his ribcage. Another young man vanished without a trace. Someone must know something. Is it you?